In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a first-person controller with a jump, crouch, sprint, and lay down feature. As a disclaimer, this is based off of the Brackeys tutorial, with a couple of fixes, alterations, and adjustments. The reason we're doing this from scratch is because we're working on a larger tutorial called how to make a first-person shooter in one hour. And for this large tutorial, we didn't want to use any assets other than for art. Getting started, we're going to set up a basic scene with a dim directional light and a plane. Before we make the script for our first-person controller, we're going to create a new game object, reset its transform, and set its tag and name to player. And then we're going to create a capsule as the child object of the player. And on its transform, we're going to move it up by one. And we're going to change its name to GFX. The next thing that we're going to do is go into our scripts folder and create a new script called FP Movement. And then we'll go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a public float called Move Speed, a vector 3 called Movement, and another vector 3 called Velocity. Then we're going to go into our update function and create a vector2 axis, and it's going to be equal to new vector2 input.getAxis horizontal, comma input.getAxis vertical. Go beneath that and say movement equals transform.right times axis.x plus transform.forward times axis.y. Now before we continue, we're also going to need a character controller. Just call it controller. And we're going to go into our start function and we're just going to say controller equals get component character controller. And then going into our update function, we're going to say controller.move movement times move speed times time dot delta time. Going back into the editor, we're going to add a character controller onto our player object, then add on our first person movement script, set the move speed to something like 5. And if you don't want your character to float a few feet off the ground, set your character controller center Y to 1. And now, let's go ahead and add a camera onto our player object. And let's make its local Y position something like 1.85. Now we need a way to look around, so let's create a new script and we're going to call it FP Look. Open that up in Visual Studio. And for this script, we're going to create a transform called Character, a vector2 called Rotation, and above that, a public float called Sensitivity. In order to set up the character component, you would think we would say get component in parent transform, but that doesn't always really work very well. So we're going to say get component in parent FP Movement and then dot transform. Going into our update function, we're going to say rotation.y plus equals input dot get axis mouse x. Go beneath that and say rotation.x plus equals negative input dot get axis mouse y. But your player might also want to have an inverted controller, so we're just going to make a public blow up top and call it inverted. Then we're going to make an if statement saying if inverted is not equal to true, and then we're going to cut out this last line and place it in. And then beneath that we're going to say else, and then we're going to copy and paste this in again, except we're going to delete this negative. Close that if statement. And we're going to make sure we can't look in weird ways by saying rotation.x equals mathf.clamp rotation.x comma negative 15 comma 15. Go beneath that and we're going to say character.eulierangles equals new vector 2 0 comma rotation.y times sensitivity. After that we're going to say transform.localrotation equals quaternion.eulier parentheses rotation.x times sensitivity comma 0 comma 0. Save that and we can go test this out in play mode. Before we test this out, we're also going to set the sensitivity to something like 5. And now I can look around. Now that we have the basics down, let's add in some jump functionality by going into our script and typing out bull grounded. Next, we're going to go to the top of our update function and we're going to type out raycast hit, call it hit. Go beneath that and say grounded equals physics dot raycast transform dot position comma negative transform dot up comma out hit comma point one F comma. And before we add in this part, we're going to need to go back up to the top and add in a public layer mask called ground mask. And then we can finish off the statement with a ground mask. And then we're going to say if grounded is equal to true and velocity dot y is less than zero, then velocity dot y equals negative one f. Then go to the bottom of the update function and say if input dot get button down jump and grounded is equal to true, then velocity dot y equals math f dot square root. And before we continue, we're also going to have to add a public float called jump height and another public float called gravity. And then going back to the square root, it's going to be square root jump height times negative two times gravity. And then beneath all this, we're going to say velocity dot y plus equals gravity times time dot delta time. We're going to again say controller dot move velocity times time dot delta time. Save that and let's go set this up for testing. Let's go ahead and create a cube for us to jump on. The first thing that you'll notice is we don't actually have a ground layer mask set up. Let's go ahead and create one and we'll just call it ground. And then we're going to need to set the planes and cubes layer mask to ground as well as the player's ground mask. Finally, we're going to set the jump height to 2 and the gravity to negative 15. And now testing this out, you'll see that we can jump around and everything's fine. But if we go right to the edge and stay there for a bit, you'll see that when we fall off, we hit the ground at lightning speed. Now to fix this, we're going to give ourselves a terminal velocity. To do that, we're going to go back to our script and say if velocity.y is greater than 10, and then we'll copy and paste this line into the if statement. And now it should work. 
Save that and let's test this out in play mode. Perfect. Except if you try jumping right against this wall, it'll actually shoot you back down. And that's because the character controllers have a step offset, and this causes it to think that this step is too high and send him back to the previous step. So let's set that to zero for now. Then we'll see that we no longer have this problem. Now you may still want to use your step offset in case you put stairs in your game later on. So let's set that back to 0.3 and go into our code. Let's go to the top of our script and place right above the gravity float a new float called step offset. And at the bottom of our start function, we're going to say step offset equals controller dot step offset. Now we have a base value to return to. Now going under our first if statement, we're going to say if grounded is not equal to true, then controller dot step offset equals zero. Else controller dot step offset equals step offset. And now if we save that and go back into play mode, we'll see that it works. And it should work if you have stairs as well. Now we're gonna set up our crouch feature. So now I've reset the level a little bit just so we can see the different levels of the crouch. Right now our capsule collider is on our GFX, but we're gonna move it to our player object. To do that, we're gonna copy the component values and then delete the capsule collider. And then we're gonna go to our player and we're gonna add a capsule collider and we're just going to paste the component values. And now it's gonna match the character controller. Next, we're going to go into our script, and under our character controller, we're going to add in a capsule collider, call it capsule collider, and instead of finding it in the inspector, we're just going to assign it to get component capsule collider. Under grounded, we're going to make an int and call it height state, and then above grounded, we're going to make a public list of vector fours called height settings. Then go down above this if statement, say if input .get button down crouch, leave that blank for now, and then we're going to create a new function called set height. Declare that in the if input statement. We're going to need to go beneath our bool grounded and make a new bool called height increase. Then in our set height function, we're going to say if height state is equal to height settings dot count minus one, then height increase equals false. Beneath that, we're going to make another if statement say if height state is equal to zero, then height increase equals true. Close those out and go beneath that and make a new if statement saying if height increase is equal to true with an else statement and then in the if statement say height state plus equals one. Then with the else statement say height state minus equals one. Go beneath our else statement, make a raycast hit, call it hit. And this is going to be for our crouch logic. It's just in place so we don't stand up where we're not supposed to. Then we're going to say if physics.raycast. But instead of saying transform.position, we're actually going to make a new vector3, call it origin, and it's going to equal new vector3, transform.position.x, comma, transform.position.y, minus 0.1f, comma, transform.position.z. Now in the if physics statement, we can say origin, comma, transform up, comma, out hit, comma, height settings, square bracket 0, dot w. Now we're going to need a layer mask, so we're going to go back to the top of our script, and we're going to make a new layer mask, and we're going to call it ceiling mask. Go back down to our if statement, type out ceiling mask. And we're going to add in logic here later, but for now we're going to go beneath this if statement. And then we're going to make a for loop by typing out for and then double clicking tab. And then instead of length, we're going to type out height settings dot count. And then we're going to check in that for loop if i is equal to height state. If it is, we're going to say get component in children fp look transform dot position equals new vector three parentheses zero comma height settings at position i dot x comma zero. Go beneath that and say controller.center equals new vector3, parentheses 0, comma, height settings at position i, dot y, comma, 0. This next part is going to be a little bit different. We're going to say controller.radius equals height settings at position i, dot z. Beneath that, it's going to be controller.height equals height settings at position i, dot w. Then we're going to copy and paste these bottom three, except we're going to replace controller with capsule collider. Also, I forgot, this isn't supposed to say position. It's supposed to say local position. Finally, we're going to save this and head back into the editor. Now you can just copy and paste these numbers into your height settings list, or you can go ahead and figure out what numbers work best for you. And once you test this out, you'll see that we can crouch and then lie down, and it works nicely. Except we still have a slight problem. We can still stand up even though we shouldn't be able to. We also don't want to be able to see through the ceiling. Let's fix this. For starters in our script and our if physics statement, we're going to say if height state is equal to zero, then height increase equals explanation point height increase. Go beneath that and then say height state equals one. And beneath that, we're going to call our set height function. Then we're going to go beneath that if statement and we're going to say if hit dot distance is less than height settings at position one dot w and height increase is equal to false, then height state equals two. After that, we're just going to copy and paste that statement, change the one to a two, and then we're going to change the last part of it from and height increase is equal to false to and height state is not equal to two. Afterwards, let's save this and go back into the editor. So the player's layer should be set to character and the ceiling mask should be set to everything except character. 
And if you remember, we had problems with the camera seeing through everything. So to fix that, we're just gonna adjust the near clipping plane to zero, which will set it to like 0.1 something. And in play mode, you'll see that when I'm not under something, then I can go all the way to standing, to crouch, to crawl. When I'm under a small obstacle, I can go from crouch to crawl. And when I'm under the smallest obstacle, I can only crawl. You'll see that I've adjusted the map, that way we can work on our sprinting functionality. The reason we waited until now to do it is because you should be sprinting at different speeds based on whether or not you're standing, crouched, or crawling. For starters, we're going to remove our move speed variable and we're going to place it with three new variables. A float called true speed and two public floats called walk speed and sprint speed. Then in our controller move statement, we're going to replace the move speed with mathf.seal to int, parentheses true speed, divided by parentheses height state plus one. This way, if you're standing, the true speed won't be messed up at all. And then we're going to make two if statements. One's going to be if input dot get button down sprint, and the other will be if input dot get button up sprint. In the button down sprint statement, we're going to say true speed equals sprint speed, and in the get button up statement, we're going to say true speed equals walk speed. And then in our start function, make sure true speed is set to walk speed by default. Let's save that, and then back in the editor, I'm just going to make the walk speed four and the sprint speed nine. Going into play mode, you'll see that everything is working and that our speed is dependent on whether or not we're standing, crouched, or crawling, and whether or not we're sprinting. And you can feel free to adjust these numbers as you feel needed. Okay, that's pretty much it, except we're going to quickly show you how to get the mouse off of your screen. New script called mouse lock. First thing, we're going to replace the start function with an awake function, and we're going to create a new function called cursor lock. Then we'll make a bool called locked, and in our cursor function, we're going to say if locked is equal to true, then cursor.lockState equals cursorLockMode.locked and cursor.visible equals false. Then we're going to say else cursor.lockState equals cursorLockMode.none and beneath that cursor.visible equals true. Then at the top of this function we're going to say locked equals explanation point locked, which just means locked equals the opposite of what it's at. And then in our update function we're going to say if input.getButtonDown cancel, which is the normal pause button or escape. We're just going to call our cursor lock function and we're also going to call it in the awake function. Save that and let's go back into the editor. And we're gonna create a new game object. We're gonna call it game manager and we're just gonna throw on our script. Later you can expand this out into an entire pause functionality, but for now this works. And you'll actually notice that the cursor disappeared earlier in the video and that's because we already did this, but we felt it was best to explain it at the end. Last, last thing, throw your player object into a prefab folder. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. We try to answer as many as possible and we'll see you next time.